Happy day! Happy yeah. Sunday to all! Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, uh, actually, we already sang that. No, we didn't. Oh, no, it's a different one. It's a different. Do you guys want to sing? Yeah. I don't know. Bob and Bash, let's do it. Come on. Let's do it. <laughs> of, oh, look out for the bad, oh, protect yourself, oh, watch your keister, somebody will get you from the back. We've trained ourselves to not pay attention to the everyday miracles that occur. And then, worse yet, we've gone one step further. We've taken the M out of miracle, and it's been this kind of eh, eh, uh, experience, right? <laughs> because we take for granted, take for granted, our miracle capabilities. And that's what I want to talk about today. You know, literally empowering through miracles. Now we tend, as human beings, to be a bit of a monkey see, monkey do species, okay? So we stand back and we say, well, if somebody will show me faith, maybe I'll have a little faith. I need to see it first to believe it. Now I am married to a wonderful woman from Missouri. The show me state. Oh my goodness. And there is a see it to believe it mantra that is so prevalent, not only in the culture of Missouri, but across the whole Midwest bandwidth that spreads clear to our coasts. And so we need to see it to believe it, right? Why? Whoever came up with that? I need to see it to believe it. Actually, we've got the principle a little backwards game. Actually, we believe it, then we get to see it. It's so cool. If our eyes are open to what's actually happening, to the miracle potential of the self, then we are actually seeing what's going on. We are living every day in a walking, talking incubator for miracles. Let me give you some examples of miracles that we take for granted every day. I am walking around in this human body. That is roughly, give or take, depending on how diligent I am in my hydration, about 70% water. This water in my body is roughly equivalent to the salinity of the ocean. Now, what is one of the most intensely effective semiconductors for electricity? Salt water. Salt water, right? So here I am walking around in a bag of water that's salinated. Yay, yay me. I'm walking around in a bag of salt water, and I have this incredible spirit running through me. I have this measurable electromagnetic current called the soul. And they've measured this electromagnetic current in many different ways throughout our medical community. All the time. What's an EKG? What's a brain scan? So I'm walking around in this hugely conductive body that conducts electricity just as well as the ocean does. And with that, I can do nearly anything. I can take that electricity and I can put my hand on someone else and conduct electricity from the universe through my body like a radio antenna into another person and that person will receive energy. They will receive love. 
they will receive a nod from the universe. Not because I'm special, not because I'm anointed by the Spirit, but because I happen to be walking around in a bag of salt water that is designed to generate electricity and to conduct it. Now, we say to ourselves, that's not a miracle, that's just science. <laughs> really? Or is it the miracle of connection? Look at what we throw away. We have so many miracles that we just throw away because we think it's common sense. Common sense. Now, obviously, we come into this lifetime with all sorts of lessons to learn. All sorts. Sometimes those lessons come in the form of the physical, physical challenges. Sometimes they come through emotional challenges. Sometimes they come through consciousness challenges that we like to call financial problems. A consciousness challenge. <laughs> that is a sermon for another time. <laughs> so what we're dealing with here is our incredible ability to be empowered through the nature of what we are, through the nature of miracles. Now, why is this hard for us to grasp? Well, gang, we here in the United States, and I certainly can't speak for the rest of the world, but considering we're in Montana, which is in the United States of America, we'll speak for the US. We are socialized in a consumerism culture. Consumerism. Think about that word a minute. Now, I swear to God, mother, father, God, this has a point. Okay? So consumerism, consuming like the great Pac-Man. I will eat, I will consume, I will take in, mine, 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 I need, I need, I need, I need. I need, I need, I need, I need more of, I need. Well, what happens when we go there? We disempower the self. We have generations of Americans that have been socialized to believe that what we need is out here. By the boob tube which, by the way, has now gone to subscription services like Hulu and Amazon. So the power of advertising has kind of gone down. But before that, we have an entire set of several generations that sat in front of that flashing television and got programmed, that's why they call it programming, that you need, need, need out here to forget the miracle potential, to forget this electromagnetic current, which is the kiss of Mother, Father, God, that runs through all of us for all purposes and all reasons. Forget it. It's out here. You need it. And for only $199, <laughs> dispersible over four payments, you too can receive enlightenment. <laughs> so, guys, listen. What we've got going on here is a re-examining of our own consciousness to recognize that we have a 4D printer right here. Who, who is a, a big techie geek like I am? Who loves, oh, oh my goodness, I'm just such a nerd. <laughs> right on, me too. I completely lose my ever-loving mind on 3D printers. Um, you know, I remember when I had a one terabyte, one terabyte, Drive. I was editing a film. That one terabyte drive was, you know, as big as a flipping bread box. Now they're like, they're like a little stick. It's Star Trek. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, I mean, literally, to take this stuff, what we've evolved into, okay, with our technology is phenomenal. And I'm a big geek about this, so I tend to follow these big technological advancements. And we have so many that flood in that are this shy, in my opinion, of a miracle or a miracle. Yet for us to say, well, that doesn't count. That doesn't matter. Guys, why do we discount it? Because the consumerism <coughs> in us says, unless I bought this, unless it's out here, unless it's come from something that's blowing my mind, it's not a miracle. I don't know about y'all, but we in the United States, in our 21st century, it's kind of hard to blow our minds. You know, when kids are walking around with $800 phones, and on that phone, they can access anything in the world as long as their parents don't know they're doing it. <laughs> That's a miracle. It's a miracle I can get on and talk to somebody in Zimbabwe about raising consciousness, which, by the way, I recently did. It is a miracle that my viewpoint of the world, which is solely stuck in my little noodle, and goes through my filter of everything, experience that I've had. It's a miracle I can communicate effectively. Because each one of you are an independent, walking, talking universe. 
birthing infinite creation through Mother, Father, God. Think about this. Think about this. Each one of you has a, we're going to talk about each one of you like you're your own star system. You know, we like to say, I'd love to be an alien or an ET. Well, look in the mirror. Because <laughs> each one of us, each one of us, comes from a completely different planetary culture of the self. It's amazing. We can even communicate. It's amazing. That's a miracle that my experiences can be shared with yours. We are each individual solar systems with personalized cultures, personalized backgrounds. We might share a few commonalities, yet there is no way in this vast universe, no way at all, that each one of us sees the world exactly like the other. Yet here we are, sharing love. Yet here we are, sharing like vision. You know why that's possible? Because we have the miracle of connection, of the universal Bluetooth, of the God within that knows the God within. Namaste. Namaste. I honor the God in you, the presence in you that honors me. Avatar, I see you. These are the miracles. So when we talk about being empowered through miracles, many of us sitting back in our consumer culture, which has trained us that everything we need is out here for only you know a bazillion dollars and 75,000% interest on your credit cards, mind you. <laughs> We're waiting for our miracle so we can believe and feel empowered. You know, with this recent election, a big portion of the country rejoices, a big portion of the country is saddened. Depends on what your perspective is. Again, there is the miracle of perception. However, many of the people who feel disheartened right now are sitting back going, well, you better show me something that's going to be good. I have been personally blanketing Facebook because that's kind of what I do, much to the dismay of anybody who's my friend, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yet I do this with messages saying, you want to see the miracle, you want to see the change, you want to see the empowerment, go look in your bathroom mirror because you're standing in the bag of salt water that conducts the universal energy to be used in any way you wish it. It's not standing here like the consumer going, where's my next sale of faith? <laughs> I need a sale on faith. Somebody provide it for me out here so I can buy it for myself with my time and with my belief. How about you just access the Mother, Father, God within and understand that we have not been disempowered. We have not been cut off from source. We have not been hobbled in our base spiritual physics. We are miracle machines. I'll give you examples of this in your own life. How many people, seriously now, be honest, have been down to the flipping wire financially? I mean, so down to the wire, you're, I mean, you're like licking the top ramen wrapper for that one <laughs> little lack of flavor in there. Okay, been there. How many of you right then, all of a sudden, get a phone call from a friend, maybe one you haven't heard in forever, going, hey, you want to come over for dinner? Yeah, we had an extra pot roast. You want to come over? We were talking about blah, blah, blah. How many times has that happened? Something like that happened, right? And or, how about this one? Oh my gosh, my car died. I have, we tend to see miracles through money. It's not sad. Consumer train, <laughs> but that's all right. Doesn't matter how we see them. God will use every pointer tool that we focus on, and we tend to focus on finances, especially in America. So how many times has your car been dying, pooping out on you? Something just went wrong. And of course, usually that happens after you get your tax return, and so you shake your fist at Mother, Father, God. Why can't I save money? <laughs> this $1,500 that came back from Uncle, Uncle Sam just went to my transmission. <laughs> Or you could say, thank you, Mother, Father, God, for paying for my transmission. Score! What good timing. Miracle perception, gang. The perception of a miracle. Right here. Right here. I could literally 
if I knew how, which I don't. My consciousness is not there, but if it were, I could turn water into wine right in front of you. And those of you that would accept that miracle would say, that was a rocking Sunday. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> those of you that were not ready to re receive that level of empowerment in yourself to be able to also go to water into wine would look at me and go, How'd she do that? <laughs> no, that chick's worked in media a long time. I gotta go talk to Culliver because I'm sure they read this. <laughs> <laughs> that surely will get butts in the seats at Unity. Water in the wine. Come on. <laughs> so our miracle receptiveness, gang, here we go. Oh dear, it has to do with personal ownness. Is a hundred percent linked with our willingness to receive the miracle, 100%. And sometimes we ask for miracles, and they don't necessarily come to play, and there are some big components here that are far above my pay grade as a spiritual translator, as a pastor, to, to tell you why certain miracles come to pass and others don't. That's a whole big other thing. That's, I would write God about that one, really. <laughs> but, however... What I would tell you is that the miracles that are meant for us, that do not interfere with our lessons, and remember that, they don't interfere with our lessons, because they can't. You know, I, I can't just say, Mother, Father, God, I would like the miracle of absolutely no more pain in my life. I'd like the miracle of infinite prosperity. I would like the miracle of an island in Fiji. I would like the miracle of a pool boy. <laughs> I would like the miracle of clean sheets put on my bed by somebody else every single morning. I would like the miracle of peeled grapes. Well, if any of my life lessons involve anything that has to do, not with struggle necessarily, but with working through something that would be attached to maybe making my own bed, guess what? That miracle probably isn't coming for me because we don't get to use miracles as cheats. This is important. We don't get to use miracles as cheats. Now, obviously, many of you know, in my other job, I, I work as a psychic. I work as a medium. And really, there is no difference in that or pastoral work. It's all spiritual translation work, in my opinion. I don't even care for the word psychic. I am a spiritual translator. The media called me a psychic. It's stuck, so here it is. However, one of the biggest questions I get regularly is, am I going to waste my time with blah? <laughs> Whatever it is. Whatever it is. And the interesting thing about that is our time is never wasted, gang. We don't get cheats. We don't get cheats. We can be advised. We can make our best efforts to try to educate ourselves. But our time is never wasted because we learn and we learn and we learn. And our time is where our miracles come to birth within us, our time. How can I receive a miracle if I am not in a position to need a miracle? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Okay, <laughs> so what we're seeing here is spiritual physics in play. Now miracles, guys, don't always have to be the bail your keister out at the 11 and the half moment before you have a trauma. That's what we tend to see miracles as, is the bailout. It was a miracle. I was bailed out of my health crisis, of my financial crisis. And those are beautiful, and those are valid. Yet miracles go beyond that which simply saves us from our duress. Well beyond. Miracles are what happens when we experience something we consider impossible. Think about how much we consider to be impossible in modern-day America. Think about that. We have such a wall of fear consciousness that we work against societally. I'll never lose weight. I'll never make more money. I'll never have a president who understands me. <laughs> really, no matter what side of the fence you're on, that's usually somebody's battle for me. <laughs> So if you think about this, we tend to look at life through a lens of what we don't have and what we will never be able to achieve because we were trained in consumerism. 
Did you know the old televisions back in the day? Had those old magnetic, huge electromagnets in the back, right? I used to love it. I used to go take them apart and get in so much trouble. <laughs> My grandma would say, Pow! Stop taking apart the TV! We can't watch Johnny Carson! <laughs> like, but Grandma, there's a big magnet! <laughs> What I didn't understand about myself back then was I have an electromagnetic sensitivity, an EMF frequency sensitivity. That's technically what a psychic ability is. Every single one of you has this same sensitivity, this electromagnetic frequency sensitivity. Every single one of you maintains a psychic ability. That's how we Bluetooth together. The whole human race gang is unbelievably charged with miracle bringing potential. So here's me, completely fascinated by the giant magnet in the back of the TV, because I could feel that thing across the room. Remember they would say, don't sit there with your face in front of the TV? <laughs> there was some merit to that, because there was a huge electromagnet back there, and of course we now know the pineal gland, which is right here, is deeply affected by magnetism. So if you're sitting there this far from the TV, you're just letting all that brain chemistry get pulled forward and just like, well, I don't know why I'm doing this, but it feels good and I'm zoning out. <laughs> <laughs> Life just isn't as fun with the flat screen, I'm just saying. <laughs> There's no rush sitting right in front of that, except for, God, I can see the pixels. <laughs> with my glasses on at 47 and 9 tenths. <laughs> so what I'm trying to point out here is that these old television Visions gang had that great big electromagnet in the back. And the way that TV works is it broadcasts a band this way and then a band this way. It's called interlacing really quickly. And that's how we see movement on TV. It goes and then somebody's moving your hand and these are called fields. So this interlacing happens even now, but it's a little differently with, with uh, our non analog technology. But back in the day, this has to do with consumerism. We would sit there and watch these television commercials in front of a giant electromagnet that affects the brain, okay, in a repeating stripey pattern, which is a strobing pattern, which affects consciousness, and we would be told we needed to buy stuff. I think this is a fascinating thing. I don't think the people who created TV were technically trying to brainwash people, yet that is what occurred because of the electromagnetic nature of the brain, because of the strobing patterns that were put through in the interlacing broadcast relay of old TV, because of how they had to do it so we could see it, and because of that giant electromagnet. All of these things affect the brain, guys. They affect the brain. They affect the brain's willingness to make chemicals. They affect the brain's ability to get into a theta wave pattern. What is the theta wave pattern? Told you I was a science geek, sorry. <laughs> the theta wave pattern is what we get into when we are meditating. A majority of you right now are in a theta pattern. I can sense it, I can see it, I can feel it on you. It's the pattern that we get into when we allow the mind to rest and we receive information. Theta waves. So sitting in 1975, in front of a giant magnet, magnets also inspire a relaxing or theta wave pattern. Strobing <laughs> inspires a theta wave pattern. So we were all open in this meditative state, zoning out in front of the boob tube, getting told, you need, you need, you need, you need. Women, you're too fat, get this. Men, you're not virile enough, get this. <laughs> it's 1970s. Men, your shirt isn't low enough, get a medallion. <laughs> <laughs> Ever wonder how that craze spread? Come on. <laughs> Brainwashing. So think about this. Think about how delicate this neural net is. You know why it's so delicate? Because we are made to be in harmony and union with the earth. Did you know the same delicate noodle up here? The same electromagnetic organ, did you know? Feels feels, not perceives, maybe thinks about, psychologically might know is there, feels the pulse of the earth. Did you know that? The earth actually has a measurable physical pulse. It's called the Schumann resonance. And it's about right here. This is the heartbeat of the earth, give or take a little bit. The Schumann resonance 
oscillates 7.83 hertz. The human brain is made to make most of its chemicals at the most optimum rate if oscillating at 7.83 hertz. We are made to be in union with this planet. Mother, Father, God, and Mother, Father, God's <laughs> awesome artistic scientist wisdom made electromagnetic beings one with an electromagnetic planet that inspires our brains to create the proper chemicals so that we will have optimum health. At 7.83 hertz, our brain creates all this chemistry that it's supposed to so that we can then create the chemicals that are necessary for healing and growth. Cellu cellular regeneration. No kidding. This is a miracle. If you ask me, this is huge. We pay big bucks to Western medicine to make us well. Or we could simply clock on to the earth. Now, that's not to say that medicine doesn't have a place. It surely does. And I am really, really glad that personally I don't happen to live in, you know, 1710. I like medical care when I need it. So there is gratitude there and all lessons of care and all lessons that we receive are good. Yet think about this miracle. Do you want to know another little piece of trivia? Our brains, if that 7.83 hertz is slowed down, can't create the chemicals that we need to be able to heal our bodies. As a matter of fact, if you slow those brain waves down to 6 hertz, just 6, just dial it back, 1.83 hertz, our brains can't balance our chemistry. We experience depression. Continual, continual oscillations at 6 hertz while we are growing a baby then can cause the development of that child's brain to have some hiccups or to have some challenges. True story. Lots and lots and lots. If you don't believe me, go to the all-knowing oracle known as Google. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> because 6 hertz, they, they've actually done huge studies where continued exposure to 6 hertz can inspire autism. It also impedes the body's ability to have cellular regeneration. And here's another piece of trivia. Ironically, a lot of our very low frequency relays that we shoot through the ground through our, our military that uses very low frequency relays through the ground to reset atomic clocks to send messages. Because you can snap stuff out of the air. It's harder to take it out of the ground. It takes really big transmitters to shoot six hertz through the ground. It's a safe way to send messages for the military. That happens to travel on six hertz, which happens to go underneath a lot of populated areas. Now, I'm not saying the military is deliberately trying to hurt people. What I'm saying is all things are connected. So look at the huge raise in depression that we have. I'm not saying that that's not genetic, because it is. Yet, look at this interesting correlation we have. Now, we're talking about miracles and empowering miracles here. We, have, we, we seem to want to break everything down to science. But is it really a miracle that we were created to be in tandem with an earth that would naturally allow our bodies to heal? I think it is based upon the limitation consciousness that many of us are born under, right? To me, that's huge. That's a huge big deal. So empowering through miracles. If we look around and accept, there's that big A word. If we accept, how many miracles are around us all the time? If we just accept it, our whole Realm changes game. Sure, we have disappointment and we have things that we wish would work out and we, we implore Mother, Father, God to help us with our pains and our sadness. Of course we do. Yet if we are willing to accept the miracles that already exist, you are going to feel an empowerment that you didn't even know was possible. You know why? Because you're going to see the world for what it is, not for what we've created it to be in our consumer vision where salvation and happiness exist externally. Once we receive the Mother, Father, God within, once we look at this grand design for what it truly is, guys and gals, <laughs> not simply because, not simply because we're looking for something happy in a haystack, but because it's real. That empowers us towards believing. And you know, I used to have this 
was saying on my website before I redid it, which was believing is seeing. And a critic of that would say, well, if you really believe anything, you'll see anything in anything. <laughs> yes, you will. And when you do that, you open your palate to receive these miracles. Jesus Christ was documented in the Bible as having, give or take, depending on whose translation, around 36 miracles as an adult. Ten miracles documented in the book of Thomas as his infancy miracles. Children, whooping up a batch. Go, guys. <laughs> the prophet Muhammad in Islam, depending on the translation of miracle, has anywhere between 10 to 26 miracles. Because in Islam, they consider prophecy or the ability to see a future event that comes true a miracle. Paramahansa Yogananda, who is Hindu. Who knows who Paramahansa Yogananda is? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Autobiography of a yogi, I highly recommend it if you're a reader of spiritual fabulousness like I tend to be. It's a really good book. Paramahansa Yogananda, dozens of miracles that this guy performed. Now, we're talking people here. Jesus Christ, the divine being, yet in a person suit. Paramahansa Yogananda, Hindu, in a person suit. Muhammad the prophet, a person. And, and back then it wasn't even Islam or Christianity, yet now we consider that Islam. Look at all the miracles spread across the world. What do these beings have in common? It's certainly not a religious modality. They're walking around in a saltwater bag that conducts electromagnetic energy that is connected to the source of Mother, Father, God, that when applied can conduct belief, can conduct miracles, can conduct energy, can conduct anything we want. And what these folks allowed themselves to do was to accept those miracles and put that belief in place. And belief is just the bridge to actualization, actually. That's the way I look at it. It's just the bridge to actualization. You know, we hear that all the time, especially those of us who grew up pretty traditional Christian. And I did. I grew up really traditional Christian. Well, you got to believe it. you got to believe in God. you got to believe in Jesus Christ. Okay, well, what's that even mean? I believe in you, Jesus, now what? You know, really? I mean, where's the instruction manual for that? Believe. Stuff will happen if you believe. Slightly obtuse for me. What I would say is allow yourself to create that bridge of actualization and accept your spiritual physics and your design as demonstrated for you by Jesus the Christ, as demonstrated for you by Muhammad, as demonstrated for you more recently in the 1920s by Paramahansa Yogananda, as demonstrated by you every day when you become the miracle in someone else's life. Mother, Father, God is not dead. Mother, Father, God is not some character in a book. Mother, Father, God is not a history lesson. Though it can be all those things if you want. Mother, Father, God can also be the analogy. Mother, Father, God is also a verb. Use it. It's an action tool. Action tool. Believing is building the bridge of actualization and accepting that there's going to be purpose on the other side of the That's called hope. That's called hope. You know why human beings get bummed out for the most part, guys? Think about this. For the most part, we tend to lose hope. Why do you think we're sad when we lose hope? Why? Well, because hope is innate to us. Think about this just a minute. We can't be sad about losing something if it's not super important to us. We can't. If hope didn't exist, we wouldn't be sad we lost it. We wouldn't get resentful that we lost it. We wouldn't get bitter later that we lost it. Which means it is part of our spiritual <coughs> genetic operating system. Hope is intrinsic to you and me. And yeah, we can have things that shake it up. Or Remember, we've been externally programmed, you guys. Give yourself a break. That doesn't mean you don't have enough faith in Mother, Father, God, or faith in yourself. Give yourself a break. We have generations of people who have been programmed, literally, 
through brain chemistry augmentation. I'm not going to decide whether or not it was purposeful, yet it occurred. To believe that everything is out here. So will you give yourselves a break if you're not just belly flopping into, I believe you, Jesus, okay. <laughs> Jeez, where's the compassion for us? You want to see a miracle happen? Have compassion for yourself and truly forgive yourself for not being superhuman. How about that? Forgive yourself for truly believing that everything you need is out here, that you can bring home the bacon on Jolie, all those 1970s, oh, I remember that one, 1970s commercials. You want to see a miracle? Be a miracle. Be a miracle for somebody. You will see miracles happen in your own life. In spiritual physics, like attracts like. Opposites only attract on Match.com. <laughs> True. Spiritual physics, like attracts like. We talk a lot about that in unity in many different ways. We've seen the secret, right? The secret, what the bleep do we know? All of these films that talk to us, not just about manifestation, but about acceptance. So remember, acceptance, hope, is the bridge to actualization. The reason people like Jesus and Paramahansa Yogananda and Muhammad went around and did these miracles is because they knew they could. And it inspired people. Pay it forward is a miracle principle. It's a miracle principle. That 50 bucks sitting in your account that you could probably live without that's going to make or break somebody staying in their apartment because they lost their job and they're 50 bucks short of rent and you just deciding to give that to them, for you, that's a decision. For them, that's a miracle. Mother, Father, God is within all of us and beckons all of us to embrace the fearlessness, to bring our miracle potential into this world for all. For all. Not just the people that you think are shyest or best or whatever. We can start there, though. We tend to be a little pack-related as humans. But expand your circle. So know this. Empowering yourself through miracles is empowering yourself to enact miracles. To enact miracles. Not just receive them. It's like, you know, Christmas. It's really fun to get gifts, but it is rocking to give them. How many times do you go out and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm going to get this for my wife, for my grandkid. And you have this perfect idea of this gift. And we don't consider that a miracle. We call that Christmas. But people get stuff they always wanted, blah, 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 sometimes. <laughs> if we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> However, remember this, you remember this for this week game. Empowering through miracles means also becoming one. It means accepting we are capable of what we like to call magic. Is it magic? No, it's actually spiritual physics, but we can call it magic if it works for you. We can call it miracles, or we can call it cause and effect. Our standing in the gap doing the right thing is someone's miracle a lot of times. It's also cause and effect. See how perception plays into this? So accept your miracles. They are here to empower us. And we are here to empower others. And other people's miracle potential is here then to empower us. And here we have this nice figure eight. It's like an alternator. Just keeps charging the battery and on we go, on we go. You are miracle machines. Accept this. Traverse the bridge of actualization called hope. Expect these miracles. See the world for what it truly is, not for what we've created it in the consumer vision. <clears throat> Go be that miracle you have always wanted to receive. Blessings to each and every one of you. Blessings.